Hey guys, it's Corinne with Thompson RV in Pendleton, Oregon. Today I have some very special guests that we're going to do an interview with. We've got Tom and Ellie from Meet You There RV Repair and Solar. So we met a couple of years ago. Uh, they started out as RV inspectors, but I will let them tell you kind of their background story. Yeah, so we met you, we were in, uh, inspecting an RV uh, for a customer, and um, we just kind of saw the whole ethos of Thompson, and it was so lovely to, to um, and it was amazing to actually inspect the ORV. It was a very easy process. Yeah, they're the pretty easy inspection on quality, those. The, the quality is so incredible. Because you guys um, have inspected lots of trailers All kinds, everywhere. yeah. All Big kinds, class A's, yeah. tiny little travel trailers, it was so many different brands. Right, um, and it was your first time seeing an outdoors RV. It was, yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, and, and now we own one. So, yeah. yeah. It was kind of cool, too. So they came to Pendleton. They live in Bend, Oregon. But they were the closest, Pendleton's pretty remote, Eastern Oregon, so there's no inspectors anywhere close. So when somebody from, let's say, the East Coast, and they don't have a chance to come look at their trailer before they drive all the way out to pick it up from us, sometimes they want to hire a private inspector to make sure that everything is up to par, somebody that's, you know, not biased in any way. So I can guarantee you I was not thinking that this is who was going to show up. I definitely, I don't know what I was expecting, but it just wasn't you guys, you know. And so when you came, it sort of became like we just instantly hit it off. Um, then we got to talking and you guys were impressed with the Outdoors RV quality. But then I found out that you your true love was solar and inverter systems yep. and lithium batteries. And oh, yeah. Tom really gets into that That's kind of power. stuff. And the truth be told, we started talking and we at Thompson RV, we're so busy with just the Outdoors RV products and making sure we find the right trailer for somebody that we almost didn't have the time and energy to focus on those big mm -hmm. solar installs. Mm -hmm. So we started chit-chatting and yeah, that's exactly what they like to do. Yeah. So we kind of kicked off a partnership. Um, so now because they're mobile, uh, it allows us to have big, large inverter, lithium batteries under the bed, you know, those big systems that people want done right here at our facility. So it's been really cool. It used to be that if somebody ordered their trailer, um, we had to send them to, you know, some sometimes another state. Yeah. <laughs> they'd drive out from Virginia, wherever, pick up their outdoors RV. Then they'd have to go stay in a motel while their solar was being installed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because some of these systems, I mean, they take... A big install will take about five days. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And now because we're mobile, we come here, we do the install, and then the customer yes. it's ready to go. And everything, yeah. Yes. Everything's good to go. Yes. And we can do our walkthrough too. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. that's a big, big part as well. We can be here when the customer picks it up most yeah. of the so time. Yeah, so they can understand their system, and then they can talk to you guys exactly. and understand their trailer. Yep. yep. So what's cool is, you know, when you order your trailer from Thompson RV, you're also on the phone with Tom and Ellie figuring out what your needs are. Because Outdoors RV comes standard, you know, you can get one, two, or three solar panels already on the roof. Um, you know, and for a lot of people, when they're just camping in a park, that might be fine. But when people really want to go off-grid, maybe they even want to run their air conditioner mm -hmm. completely off-grid. Maybe yeah. they don't want to ever have to buy propane and they want to go with a DC fridge. Yep. Maybe they don't want to run a generator. Maybe they don't want to, or maybe they live in a state where they can't run a generator, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So there's all those different factors that come into play as to why somebody would want yeah. a bigger system than what's available from the factory. Yeah. It's, it, solar is, everybody has a different version of solar to suit them. It's kind of, what are you trying to achieve, you know? And so it's exactly. very, and that's a big reason we have different packages so that we can kind of tailor that. You know, if someone wants to go bigger than the factory solar, then we also have levels of, of, our, of our systems Depending available. on what you want to run, what appliances you want to run, yeah. how long you want to be out off-grid. Um, right. Yeah. So that brings up a good question. So when you've got your 12-volt power, that's going to run your furnace. Um, it's going to run everything in the coach with the exception of air conditioning, your fireplace, your microwave and then 110 outlets. outlets so what yeah. is the most common question you get? What are people wanting to run off these systems? The hair dryer for the, the hair wife dryer? is a pretty, okay. pretty big it's one. It's a must. I don't, I don't need a hair dryer. <laughs> but, um, a coffee maker. Coffee maker, often CPAP machines and oxygen. Um, right. And microwave obviously is nice. And Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you've got the extreme people that want to run air conditioning. Air conditioning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is, yeah. which is a bit, it's, 
it's achievable, but it's it's difficult. You know, that's a big, right. heavy appliance. Exactly. Um, but yeah, all our customers get soft starts in their RVs with their solar setup, so they can run run their air conditioner from their batteries. Right. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we always we our install on our rig will probably run an AC because we worry about our dogs. In yeah, the that's a big right. one. And yeah. If the AC does go out or if the grid does go out, then the dogs will be okay if it's a super hot. Absolutely. Day. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah I you never even thought of that. Think about it as a backup plan too, you know, if you're in yeah, in okay. a really hot hot area, sure. you know, mm-hmm. and the, and you are in a park, but you still have that system available, your batteries are totally full, well, you're going to get by hopefully until they can fix the power or something right. like that. Right. So. Right, exactly. So the the particular unit that we're standing in front of, um they just recently got done customer from Alaska, um, you know, he ordered his trailer through us and then talked with them about what his needs were. So they installed a pretty elaborate system. It's not your most elaborate. No, it's, yeah. it's not. It's um, it's fairly robust for this size trailer. Often yeah. the limiting factor is going to be roof space. So, sure. you know, we, we, when we put the solar on, we, we're not just trying to coat the roof, you know, because there's still right. things like roof maintenance, like... You know, unfortunately, the air conditioner may give out at some sure. point, and so yeah, we try to keep the access. air conditioner cleared. So yeah, there's, but it's yeah, it was what the customer wanted, and I think it'll right. suit him really well. Right. So. Yeah. So now, when would you need maybe just solar and batteries, but not an inverter? Really, it just comes mm-hmm. down to like like I think we were talking about like these rigs are the best thing about RVs is they can run on battery. You know, they can run just 12 volt. You get the right. propane, fridge, you know, max air fans, Your lights. Your furnace, everything you need everything, to really The essentials. You know, I always look at it as warmth, running yes. water, you know, like there's... Your water pump. You, yeah, right. exactly. So, right. but if you want to run anything 120 volt, then sure. you, you need an inverter. Your and, dryer, right. your coffee maker. Yeah, all those your items. Your and Your microwave. Yeah. Anything you plug in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. And yeah. our installs, we do a whole house inverter, so the whole rig becomes electrified. Correct. It's not just certain outlets or, right. you know, you're plugging into the inverter. If it's, you're going to do it, you really need to just... You just do it the yeah. right way. Because, yeah. and then, uh, are you using an inverter charger system? It is, yes. And yeah. so that's the other beautiful thing is is the 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 MultiPlus, which we use on most of these 30-amp rigs, is a really good battery charger. It's, right. It's, it's the perfect battery charger, and we program it so that it really looks after your batteries really right. well. It, it, it keeps them balanced, and... It also charges them really, really quick. And that's a better ch- uh, converter charger than what comes standard. It is, yeah. Yes. And, and mostly just because it of how fast it charges. Right. And, and it has an, uh, other little neat functions, which right. I can get into. Right. Right. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. So in a minute, maybe you can show me that. Yeah. The charger, the converter that comes on the unit, it's not a bad one. It's a no, progressive it's, dynamics. It's, it's a good lithium, unit. lithium. You know, it has the lithium, lithium switch on it. Lithium so, compatible. Yeah. Exactly. Kind of yeah. like the solar charge controller. Exactly. The ZAMP is a different style than what you guys use. Yep. Yeah. We use the MPPT, Victron right. MPPTs most right. of the time. Yeah. Um, and for yeah. standard use with the, the solar panels that come on the roof from the factory and batteries that we would install here at Thompson RV, it's a good setup. It just It's a, just a different level of need yeah right and what you want to be exactly (laughs) well that's the cool thing too was when we met you know the outdoors rv quality everything on them is meant to be in the middle of nowhere yeah right i mean you can absolutely take these to a park and plug in and just sit by your fireplace and drink wine yeah but they are capable of going skiing yeah you know they're capable of going into the backwoods where nobody else can get and so some people don't want to have to come back to town yep and again that's when yeah, Your and they have, you know, the handy. tank sizes are great, you <laughs> yes. know, and so having the, the power to match that, you know, exactly. is, is pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah. yeah, that's why we love them so much. And cool. we love working on them, you yes. know, too. So. Yeah, because you notice even when you're installing, you would notice the quality the of quality, the cabinetry and everything. Yeah, yeah Flooring, exactly. insulation, yeah. all of it. Oh, easy yeah. for technician, just the whole design of the ORV. It's very easy to work on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, access the EMS and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Very cool. And so then um, I know a common question I get too is if you do the solar system, are you operating off of that same setup that they set up top or are you running your own wires? We we don't run the wires. That's pretty hard to do once mm-hmm. these things are put together, yeah. you know. Um, we we replace a few components, but we use the wire. Okay. Yeah. 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 So having that prep there is nice. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. Like the first time we did an install on one of these rigs it was just like oh that's right there that's, yeah <laughs> that's nice you know so exactly yeah yeah because of their construction with that solid front cap 
there'd yeah. be really no yeah. way way to run wide. Right. It's tricky. Yeah, exactly. It's, we do have to do it in a lot of our other installs, but yeah. it's it's tricky. Yeah. yeah. So now tell me, what would be the difference? Why would somebody want a lithium battery over just like say a six volt AGM? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it really comes down to. Well, firstly, budget is one. Mm -hmm. Obviously, lithium's pretty expensive, obviously. Um, but really, I think stepping up to the inverter, I think, is a okay. big one because you need... It, it's about how fast the current can leave the batteries. And okay. so six-volt AGMs are great. They can be discharged quite a bit, and mm -hmm. they're pretty robust and solid. Um, but lithium is just... It, it accepts a charge really, really quickly, and it, and it gives off current really, really quickly. And when okay. you have a inverter that's trying to run your air conditioner or your microwave sure. it's requesting a lot of power right. at, in a short amount of time okay so that would be the, the main so reason. if somebody's sticking with just more or less a 12 volt system yeah. six volt agms would be a pretty good route Perfect. to go yeah yeah okay. and with the solar you know on the being a a smaller battery bank if they just have say two six volt batteries um you've got a lot more solar than the battery bank that ratio of what's sure. on the roof to the capacity of the battery is right. quite quite high so those batteries are going to be almost constantly held charged up. Right. So they'll last a long time with, right. the, with that factory set. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. So I think we have this one, the inverter's installed in the front pass. Yep. Do we want to go take a peek at that? Yeah, let's Yeah, yeah let's absolutely. So on the outdoors RV, you know, when the customer decides that they're going to want to go lithium, they're going to want to go inverter, they want to run 120 volt stuff. Um, the the MultiPlus here is kind of the 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 workhorse of the system i guess because it's going to take the 12 volts with the lithium and invert it to 120 volt current so you'll actually be powering 120 volt from your batteries um, it's also a charger um, and we mount it most of the time there's kind of a few options um, under the bed is an option but most of the time we'll mount it here in the pass through um, there's a nice solid wall there um, it, it really doesn't take up much space in the pass through because it kind of tucks up into this little area right. here um, and yeah, under the bed is an option as well. It just, when this thing's working hard, either charging or inverting it, there are fans. So it does, it can get a little noisy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And really you're right. It doesn't take up that much space at all. No, no, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty seamless there. I yeah. Think. Yeah. And all of your wiring, you guys use a color coded wire. It looks really we sharp. Do. Yeah. We, those are yeah. our custom colors. Right. Ma matching right. our. Yes, uh, exactly. Know. But it looks, every system I've ever seen you guys do, it's. We like try to make it look as super clean. nice as possible. We yeah. take a lot of time thinking about where to run wires and right. and keeping it organized means that if it ever does need to get worked on by someone other than us, you know, yes. it's laid out nicely for them to right. clearly follow it because it right. does get kind of complicated yeah. with all the wiring. Right. So. Okay. And so then uh, your inverter, typically at that point, you're going to want to upgrade and go lithiums. Yep. Yep. Okay, and so then do you guys mount them on the outside or on the inside? So the lithium, again, it's kind of two options. You know, we do some installs where they're in the pass through here. Okay. Um, most of the time I'm going to recommend under the bed. Okay. Um, it's just, it's, we'll see when we go inside. There's kind of, again, a kind of a perfect place for those batteries. Sure, okay. Yeah. And is it safe to have them under your bed? It is, yeah. We get that question all the time, you know, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people have, you know, there was the, the time where people's phones were exploding because right. of lithium. And, <laughs> exactly. And, you know, most people who have owned RVs know that standard batteries, they vent hydrogen gas. You know? Right. And so okay. that can be a, obviously be a huge concern. Which is why place. they need to be outside. Exactly. Okay. With lithium, there's none of those concerns. Okay. Um, there's also inside the lithium battery, there's a BMS, which kind of takes, it's the, kind of the brain behind the batteries because mm -hmm. they're a smart battery. Yeah. And so it's going to control things in those situations that may otherwise be dangerous. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, specifically Battleborn, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah we That's use Battleborn we use. products yeah. only. Um, either the 100 amp hours, um, which we put at least three of them in. Our, right. our packages come with three standard. Uh -huh. um, but lately we've been using the Game Changers, which are a 270 amp hour battery. Okay. Um, and there's a nice place for those under the bed, which gives the customer... 540 amp hours if they go okay. with two of those. Perfect. Yeah. Let's go take a look at the batteries. Let's do it. Okay. So we have another uh, install with the 100 amp hour Battleborns, four of those. Okay. Um, but I really wanted to show you guys this install because this is with the game changers. And I really okay. think those are the perfect battery for these systems. I think um, it's it's two batteries for 540 amp hours. Okay. Versus having to have 
five or six batteries with, oh, with more gotcha. connections, you know, and they're a more robust single battery. So okay. We love them. Okay. Yeah. And so Outdoors RV, they put these two drawers under the bed and yeah. then they just started adding in this shoe. Yeah. So spot. that kind of changed things a little bit for us in terms of where we put everything. Um, but it still worked out. Uh, right. Customer still gets to use this area yeah, I for see storage. That. Um, yeah. The drawers, you lose the drawers. Okay. Um, you lose the function of the drawers. Right. They still look nice. Yes. Um, yeah. I thought they were still there. Don't try Which to pull on sense, it. Doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, but there's actually a lot of room in there uh, okay. that we can access once we, once we remove those drawers. Okay. So, perfect. Um, and you put in a little thumb hold so people yeah, can still so get a, is, you yeah. know, you know, you can store your stuff on here, but then obviously right. there's, there's not really, you know, this stuff is pretty solid once it's in here in terms of having to change things. It's, okay. There's, there is a, a battery disconnect under there, but for the most part, it's... You don't even need to access you it. You won't need okay. to access it. Perfect. But, um, so under here... Oh, wow. Sit that right there for a minute. So on this side over here, we have the two game changers. Yeah, that fits and in so there really nice. It really does, yeah. And so you'll see on our other install... With the 100 amp hours, mm -hmm. they almost take up, well, they do. The, the four 100 amp hours mm -hmm. will take up more space than these. And this okay. is, you know, that's an extra 140 amp hours worth of power. Right, so, right. Um, yeah, I, I can, yeah. So what it, what is back here? Yeah, so if we want to start talking about all of the components sure. under yeah, here, absolutely. we can. It may be... It looks really clean. It looks really nice. It may get, get a little lost in the weeds with some okay, of this stuff. Okay, that's fine. But, um, but basically, basically, you have your solar power. Yes. It's coming down. Yes. So <clears throat> the, sim the system, in, in simple terms, you know, a lot of people always ask us, you know, can I run my air conditioner from my solar? Right. You know, and I think a lot of people, they understand that the solar is what's powering things, but it's, it's really, the solar is just charging. Right. You know, the solar is charging your battery bank. Okay. It's, it's your battery bank that is then running your air conditioner, not right. your solar. So um, the solar on the roof comes in, actually comes into this thing that you pointed out, actually. This is our solar disconnect, which, okay. again, is is not something that the customer will really need to use all right. that often because you want your solar always charging your batteries. Okay. Um, but it's we need that in there for a few circumstances. Um, the solar comes in from the roof through the disconnect and then into your solar charge controller, um, okay. which is over this side And of that's the different than the one that would come from the factory. It is, yeah. So we use the Victron MPPT charge controller okay. um, instead of the uh, Pulse Width Modular one, the PWMs. So it, it, they well, do a slightly better job at harvesting. So, oh, okay. So for, you know, if you had a PWM controller and an MPPT controller next to each other, same array, same setup. Right. You're generally going to get a little more harvest out of the MPPT. Okay. Um, especially with shade. It'll help a little more in those Oh, situations gotcha. Okay. Well. Um, the cool thing about this Victron stuff is it's all has Bluetooth. Um, oh, and gotcha. And so you can check your batteries, you can check your um, solar, and you can, you know, I'll show you the screen that you can kind of see everything. And okay. it, 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 it's, that's our favorite thing about it is how uh, it really gives you a good glimpse of what the system is sure. doing. Sure. Um, yeah. So to continue on that, I guess, you know, the, the charge controller and then the charge controller is charging your batteries, your solar charge controller. Um, and that prevents it. So let's say I'm, I'm plugged into shore power. Yeah. It's not going to overcharge the batteries because I've got that. Exactly. Okay. And it's, 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 you know, it, it has its different stages of, of charge. And so right. once it senses the batteries are full, it's going to put them into float. Sure. And then actually periodically it will also, uh, kind of refresh your batteries okay. through an absorption. Okay. So, um, yeah, uh, this customer actually wanted, he has some portable panels, uh -huh. um, and different to the, the, the factory or the Zamp style briefcase kind of right. panels. It, his doesn't have a charge controller on them. They're just like panels that we would usually install okay. on the roof. Okay. And so we actually put a second MPPT in here for him and a plug at the front of his trailer so he can charge with a portable panel, but it's a portable panel that's going to be tied into this right. system with the Bluetooth. And when he uses his monitor screen, he'll see the charge from both charge controllers Interesting. at once. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the real kind of brains behind everything here is the servo, mm -hmm. um, which is this little blinking device down here with all the okay. wires attached to it. So. It's kind of the communication 
center hub for everything. So the inverter is tied into it. The charge controllers are tied into it. Okay. The battery is tied into it and it allows us to power our um, touch 50 screen, which gives us all the information. Okay, um, cool. And so on that, uh, when you have it Bluetooth to your phone, you yep. can see all the power that you're using yes, yep. plus all the power coming in. Yeah. 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 So you, if you're in a shady location and you're concerned that you're not getting enough solar power, yeah. it's going to be right there in front of you telling you how much you're using, whether you're running your furnace, exactly. your TV, your air conditioner, whatever it is. So it's really going to give you a hands-on, here's what's coming in, here's what's going out. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, like, you know, regardless of how large your system is, you still are going to have to manage your power. Sure. You know, yeah, still, absolutely. It's not, unfortunately, there's not enough roof space to make this an, an indefinite system. You right, know, you, you, right. You are going to need to think about... And it's a good, it's actually really good for the customers because you see them starting to think, oh, my furnace uses 10 amps. Right. My air conditioner uses 100 amps. So right. the customer, through the monitoring, the customer kind of gets really familiar with their power use. Yes. Yeah. And what's what's taking the most amount of power exactly. versus, yeah. yeah, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And the smart shun is really nice because it'll actually tell you based on how much current sun is, you know, how much solar is charging and how much you're using, it'll actually give you a a time to go in, right. in days or hours. That's cool. Yeah, so that's a nice yeah. feature too. Because people do, they, they question us a lot on that sort of thing. And, you know, 12-volt uh, refrigerators are becoming more popular. And so people are asking us constantly, well, how long can I stay out? Yeah. You know, and so question. it gives you a really hands-on because exactly. there's so many variable factors. Yeah. How much sun? What are you, what running? Are you running? How yeah. cold is it? Are you yeah. running your furnace? Yeah. Right. So all of those questions come into play. Yeah. So then that smart shunt right just there, takes it right to your smartphone. Yep. And boom, you know exactly how long you can stay out. Yeah. So you yep. have another unit with hundred amp hour batteries that yeah. you're going to show us. Yeah. That'd so be that awesome. customer, he actually, he being in Alaska, mm -hmm. his the temperatures are actually going to get so low that he'll have to remove his batteries. So oh, okay. You know, they the, the 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 they have a low temperature cutoff, which at which point they won't accept a charge sure um but his being in alaska his temperature is going to get so low that it, he'll actually have to remove his batteries. okay okay yeah and, so, yeah, and he, so that's why a lot of people if they're putting them just on the front of the trailer they yes, would go heated heated yeah yes definitely. but a lot of people want to put them inside yep. because then obviously if you're keeping the trailer temperature yeah for if, you if you're warm enough yes the batteries are warm enough and right. so we 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 put venting in um and the purpose of the venting is kind of twofold so it's when it's warm, it allows the warm air from these components because they uh -huh. all generate a little bit of heat right. um, to escape. But in the cold, it allows your furnace heat to warm your batteries. Oh, which sure. keeps them up and running. That so, makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Yep. All right. Let's go look at the other one. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so this particular gentleman lives in Alaska, so he went with the 100 amp hour batteries because he's going to have to remove them. Correct. But yeah. that's really uncommon. It is, yeah. The temperatures generally aren't going to get that low. And, and if you're in the trailer, again, you're not going to be at negative right. 15 degrees. You're going to be at a nice, comfortable 70 in the batteries. Exactly. Fine, so. Okay. Um, and then, because really, the game changers fit in this space. The game changers fit perfectly. Our, okay. uh, our rig is actually going to have four game changers, so we're going to utilize this oh, side, cool. which will be... It, over the top. But, right, but, right. Yeah. And then this battery disconnect, is this different than the one in the front compartment? It is. So that's kind of like a master disconnect. You're not really going to be using that. Again, like I mentioned, you, nothing under here you really need to get at all that often. Sure. Um, the one at the front still is going to function exactly like it does okay. in, in the in the factory. So, so would a person, let's say it's winter, yeah. um, would a person want to use the battery disconnect or just let the system do its thing? So... It depends on where they are. Obviously, sure. lots of factors there. The panels are going to be covered in snow. Right. Um, you would want to make sure that nothing is drawing power in the coach. Okay. You know, and so you would use the 12 volt disconnect up the front, just sure. like a normal outdoors RV customer would. And then okay. you will also probably turn this disconnect off. So, okay. So lithium likes to be, it'll stay stored. It won't really drop voltage over time. Mm -hmm. So. You kind of want to get it, get them charged up, bring them down just a little bit, right. and then you could store them that way. Okay, but or for, keep it plugged in. Or keep it plugged okay. in, exactly, okay. yeah. So that's, it's it's not often you'll have to use that red disconnect. There. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then on this model, you also installed... The Touch 50 screen, yeah. Okay. So the Touch 50 screen comes uh, included with our second package and above. Okay. Um, basically, if you're going to a, a solar through us, mm -hmm. 
Um, that means we're going to be putting in the Victron MPPT. Right. Which then that information, in order to transmit that to the Touch 50, uh -huh. it has to be this Victron MPPT. So oh, at that okay. point, they get the Touch 50 because it's just... It's really slick. It's it's my favorite part about okay. the system is the monitoring. Yeah. Do you want to show me that? Yeah, let's look at that. Perfect. So this is the Touch 50 that we were talking about with the servo tying in all those devices together. So, okay. Um, it's, really, it's really a neat way to understand the system, but also see where the system is at. Right. Um, and so basically all our information is shown here. So... This, these little squares, you know, usually, we're not plugged into shore power right now, so usually oh, there would be okay. a picture of a shore cord there to show okay. you're plugged in, which is also nice. You know, a lot of people usually look at the microwave to see whether they're right. plugged yeah. in. But with the inverter, the microwave light is always going to be on. Oh, good point. When you're when you're not not in power, so having this screen, you can see it tells you what the multiplus is doing because remember it's an inverter and a charger. Right. So right now it's inverting. It's not charging because okay. we're not plugged in. Right. Um, and basically we're not really running any 120 volt stuff right now. Mm -hmm. So usually, you know, through these little moving dots, you can mm -hmm. kind of see, okay, well right now, uh, this is our solar charger over here. We've got 514 Watts coming into the batteries. And so you okay. can see this kind of moving into the batteries. Right. So understanding right. that we are running, 12 volt DC stuff in here. We've got the lights on. And so the batteries are, are running some DC stuff mm -hmm. when we're inverting, you know, it would show power leaving the batteries to the inverter, which is oh. creating. So if we turn on the air conditioner right now, yes, that would that, show you power going exactly. out and it how would. much power is going out. Exactly. So yeah. that way you would know, yep. depending on how many solar panels you have, how many batteries you have, how yep. hot it is, exactly. how long you could be running your solar because exactly. you could watch this number go down. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. There's, a, there's a number here, which is in amps in the battery. And that basically you're looking at that. Is it a positive number or is it a negative number? Sure. And if it's, it's a positive number, that means your batteries are actually charging. If it's a negative number, they're discharging. So faster than uh, they're charging, faster than they're charging. It okay. Kind of, it, it takes, it takes everything and works out the differential. So sure. it, it'll, you know, there's, X coming in from the, the solar, but you're running X, then overall, this much is going right, into the batteries. Right, right. But if somebody stops to get groceries yes. or make a sandwich, but they want to keep their dogs inside their trailer, yeah. it'd be a great time you could utilize Absolutely. turning on Absolutely. That's one of the huge benefits to these systems, you know, as well as just being out in nature and being able to run the air conditioner when it gets too sure. hot. like pulling over for lunch, right. um, maybe staying at a harvest house where they don't allow oh, right. generators. Right. You, know, you can have right. air conditioning um, just for those kind of incidental times. Okay. So, um, yeah, and like a big question we get obviously always is is how long can I run the air conditioner? And right. There's a lot of factors involved in that. Right. Um, usually we would say, well, if you're thinking about air conditioner use like every day, then you're going to want to maximize the solar. Biggest system. The biggest system we Absolutely. have. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but every system we have uh comes with at least 300 amp hours mm -hmm. and the soft start so right. running the air conditioner is possible okay it's just f for how long right um, right luckily with all of this information on this screen yeah you know exactly how long. yes so absolutely you, you might figure out okay well i can only run it for these three hot hours in the day sure or uh, i got tons of power i can run it yeah. all day so. the crazy thing though with outdoors rv and how well they're insulated you're going to get more Exactly. The air conditioner is not always It's on. not going to work yeah, as hard exactly. as it would in a yeah. lesser quality you trailer. You cool the trailer down, let it yes. hold that, you know, hold that temperature yes. and not be using all of your battery Right. Power. Exactly. Yep. Cool. The other neat thing, I could talk about this forever because I love these screens, but the other neat thing about this, um, and this is getting into that nitty gritty, which I think I mentioned earlier with the, with the MultiPlus and its functions. So let's say you're mooch docking, you're at somebody's mm -hmm. house, you plugged into a 15 amp outlet. Right. You only have, you know, you use a dog bone, obviously, right. and, but, but usually you can't run the air conditioner or right. the microwave at the same okay. time, or you end up tripping all their blankets. Yes, exactly. So what the MultiPlus has is a power assist function. And so you can actually, it'll take 15, amp, you, through this screen, you say, I'm plugged into a 15 amp outlet. Or I'm yeah. plugged into a 30 amp. You tell the MultiPlus what you have available. Okay. And you say, I'm plugged into a 15 amp outlet. It will then take 15 amps from the outlet, you know, from the right. from your friend's house that you're right. plugged into. But if you try to run more than 15 amps worth of equipment in here, it will actually 
use the inverter side oh that's cool and boost from the batteries gotcha. so all of this to say that this rig will function like it's plugged into 30 amps right when you only have 15 amps that is it. cool it's i didn't really know that nice. yeah. okay yeah, very it's cool. A really cool feature and then i know on this particular model you also installed a dc to dc we did yeah so um when you go to lithium uh it's they're very different battery chemistry mm -hmm. and charging from the truck, the seven pin of the truck, it, they'll charge, mm -hmm. just often not quite enough. You know, oh, and, okay. and it's a massive battery bank now too. Gotcha, you know, okay. With 500. And, so what the DC to DC charger does is allows your truck alternator to basically put more current into your batteries okay. while you're driving. So, okay, perfect. Um, yeah, it's I a, get a lot of questions on that. It's not something that we install. So yes, you guys install that sort of thing. We do, yeah. And that, it can be a little tricky because we also need the truck. Right. You know, because we oh, have to, true. With with the DC to DC charger, we also have to run a charge line through the truck. Mm -hmm. So as long as the customer can give us the truck for a day, maybe right. the day they pick up, right, we can have that done yeah. for them. But we do the RV side of things. You know, we can do that whenever. Sure. You know, whenever we're doing sure. Install, so. Yeah, and like we talked about earlier, a lot of people will come, and Tom and Ellie have already done their system. We've already done all of our service work on the unit, so the unit's completely ready to go. The customer can come then, um, if it works out logistically, yeah, yeah. meet with Tom and Ellie, go through the system, install the DC to Z, DC charger, the truck, yep. and then do everything they need to do at Thompson RV, exactly. get their walk through orientation, all of that. Yeah. And then typically our campers stay for a couple of days. Yeah. And we yeah. also, you know, they, if timing wise, you know, we get the install done and they're not here. Like it is a complicated system. So we, we film personalized videos oh, on the whole okay. system for every customer. Very so cool. If they're not there in person, we right. film those for them. And right. that's often sometimes more useful because they have it, you know, they're like, what's the Tom yes. again? Like, let's rewind. You right, know, right. So. Exactly. Is there anything else on this particular unit? Um, just the solar on the roof. Oh, yeah, okay. If we wanted to go take a look at that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we've talked about pretty much everything. Okay, yeah. cool. Let's take a peek at that. So we do offer uh, an inverter only package. So that is someone's going with the factory solar. Um, we can still just put the inverter and the batteries under the bed for them. Uh, but in terms of our solar packages, they start at 800 watts, which is what you're seeing right now. And so ultimately the customer could have gone for more wattage. Uh, we do always push as much solar wattage as possible because it is, these systems aren't cheap by any means, but the solar is kind of the cheapest way to boost the system um, and improve the system. So as many watts as, as, as reasonable, you know, the, like I talked about earlier, we want space around the air conditioner for two reasons, really, to service the air conditioner if it ever needs to be taken off the roof, but also the air conditioner casts a little shade. So we try to think very carefully about where we place the panels. Um, Outdoors RV does a very good job of having plenty of skylights, plenty of max air fans, those really nice features. They do unfortunately get a little bit in the way of our solar panels, but we can kind of work with the customer and figure out exactly what they need and, and what we'd recommend in terms of the amount of watts of solar. Um, yeah, Ellie will be the main contact. Uh, you'll talk to her initially and, and uh, yeah, she, we can go downstairs and she can kind of tell you about a little bit about that process. Okay, so now I hope everybody understands the difference between going with like a factory solar system and then what we can accomplish going with one of your systems. So if somebody wants to schedule an appointment to talk to you about what they want, how, mm -hmm. do, how would they get a hold of you? So uh, you can check out uh, other installs linked below. Um, we, the best way to get a hold of us is to give us a call or send a web contact from our website. Okay. Um, but then I will schedule a call uh, we can do an energy audit with you and you can talk to Tom and he can kind of walk you through the system that could be the best sure. for yeah, your because, preference. Yeah. People might have questions on what, what they, they, they're not even sure what they need exactly. at this point. Yeah. 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 They yeah. can tell us what they want to run, how off grid capable they want to be. And then we can walk them through the packages. Sure. Um, there are specific packages to Thompson RV customers. So we'll send them that link yeah. and they can check them out. Yeah. And, uh, they can also check out our YouTube to see what kind of um, system they can go through the systems and see right. exactly what they want. Yeah, yeah. Cause they may even find their floor plan and, sure. and an install that we've done on their on their exactly. particular floor plan, so mm -hmm. they can get a yeah. good idea of what it's going to yeah. look like. The other thing is Instagram and Facebook. I follow you on Instagram, and I mm -hmm. see you're always posting 
cool yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. We kind of do our walkthroughs on Instagram and Facebook, and uh, yeah, yeah, a bit of behind the scenes of the, yeah. of the process. So yeah. there's a lot of different ways to find Tom and Ellie, and then I think um, everybody is probably wondering, but where are you from? What's your accent? Oh yeah, that's uh, <laughs> just don't say New Zealand. Okay? Right, right. I'm Australian. Right, so. I know. That's a, it's a, what can I run with my inverter and yeah, um, yeah. What, what's your accent? <laughs> Hopefully people can understand me in the video. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks guys. And let us know if you have any questions.